today's video we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. A good low-fat vegan banana smoothie for the win. About 2,000 calories for breakfast. Quick question. How do I use my power meter? You got your power meter. You grab it, you put it on your crank. You pair it with your Garmin. And then you're like, what do I do next, Harley? What do I do next, do I a good book to read. I'm not sponsored by any products. Right? I'm not sponsored by Strava. I'm not sponsored by Stages. I'm not sponsored by this guy. I'm not sponsored by Garmin. This is all stuff I buy with my own coin just to help the everyday cyclist. Because I can relate to where you were. I wish I had this information back when I started. That's a good book to get. Get the latest edition. It's, it's pretty easy to read. It's got some great things. Some of the stuff I sort of flick through, skip through. But it just gives you an idea. You don't even need this book though, but if you're interested, this is the best book on training the power meter. Again, not sponsored, but I think it's a great book. What do I do? How do I use my power meter? I've got power meter on every single bike I own now, except for the shopping bike. But then again, my shopping bike can be my race bike. Well, how do I use the power meter? Getting cut into the chase. The power meter is the most effective tool for pacing, all right? Cycling is an endurance sport. Pacing is key. It, any, any event lasting longer than 30 seconds, pacing is key. So you're going to go up your local climb, right? You're going to go to the local, it takes you 20 minutes. Over a few weeks of riding with a power meter, you work out what wattage you can hold without blowing up, without putting up too much lactic acid. Lactic acid is when your legs start to sizzle, your whole body's like your tip of your tongue feels like someone's hit it with a fucking hammer. You just like in a world of pain, that's lactic acid, which is fine, but if you want to climb fast, you've got to minimise how much lactic acid you produce by riding at a lower wattage or a sustainable wattage for that given climb. So if your climb's a minute, you can just pretty much go crazy. If your climb's longer than a minute, you need to have a pacing strategy. And a power meter is the only way to pace on a climb. Heart rate takes three or four or five minutes to get up and it's variable. Average speed means nothing. I remember one time I went up uh, Corkscrew Road with a friend and, and he's uh, he kept surging. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? He's going, I'm trying to hold my average speed. And I'm like, <laughs> so he was going slow on the flat bits and then sprinting up the steep bits. And he, he, he's just putting so much lactic into his muscles. He just he almost had to get off his bike and walk. And I'm like, yeah, that's not how you climb, man. You want to have an even wattage the whole way up the climb. An even wattage. It's all like, oh, I guess that makes sense. I said, yeah, get average speed off your Garmin, put power on it. And get a power meter. And he did that and he's just climbing out of the fucking world. All my friends who get power meters, insane improvements. Insane improvements. Some teenage kids are right with and they get on the power meters now and the improvements they've had in the last year is just it's like they're on EPO or something. It's crazy. Because it lets you all of a sudden pace properly. Instead of getting enthusiastic and smashing the start of the climb, you go to look at your numbers, go, okay. An easy way to do it. If you're not in good shape at the moment, climb at one to three watts per kilo. So let's say you, you're 50 kilos. That's 50 to 150 watts that you climb at. If you're in shape and you really want to push it, climb at four to seven watts per kilo. And then you'll quickly work out what your watts per kilo is. On my Garmin, I don't have watts per kilo on it. I just use watts per kilo because that applies to everyone. On my Garmin, I just have three second power at the top and then cadence underneath and distance, etc. That's what I focus on is the three second power averages and the cadence. And I'll tell you what, I train with a lot of pro riders in January over the last 10 years and every year more and more riders using power meters. Almost 95% of the peloton now uses power meters. So only four years ago, it was maybe 15% because it's just such a powerful tool. It lets you know if you're overtraining because if you go out to go to a hard ride and you can't hit your wattages, you need more rest or you need more water, sugar, sleep, etc. or all of the above. So how to use a power meter is basically it's a pacing tool. That's all it is pretty much. It's something you can pace against. Nothing else, nothing else. Heart rate, speed, nothing else matters. Only power matters. Watts per kilo is the only thing that matters as a cyclist. So use watts per kilo as a to get your numbers to start with 
and then you work out what watts you can hold on a certain decline. So if you're not in that good of shape, or if you're new, climb at one, three watts per kilo, do the math, your body weight times one, or your body weight times two, or your body weight times three, that's what I write as, as recovery. If you're really fit and you really want to fucking test yourself, four to seven watts per kilo. <laughs> and then you quickly work out what watts per kilo you can hold for whatever climb, depending on if you're going to do a, a three peaks challenge in Australia, or if you're going to ride a grand fondo in, in France, and you're going to ride 200Ks. You'll quickly work out what watts per kilo you can hold for the climbs. So many people are going to blow up, and you're probably going to get on a compact crank set, because you'll work out, hang on, I'm, 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 I'm like, oh, I can't even hit 80 cadence, and I'm, I'm losing power. If you can hit 80, to 80 plus cadence, you'll get more power to the bike. You'll feel like your legs are going nowhere, but when you look at your power meter, look at your Garmin, your watts are going up, you're like, fuck. No wonder Lance Armstrong spun so much. No wonder Chris Froome spins like a washing machine off its rails. No wonder Bradley Wiggins sits in the saddle and fucking spins the fuck out of the pedals. That's what gets more power.